I'm Dump Truck DS. This is Mapping for Quake. You may have seen a recent video on the very first Quake map I made back in 1997. While making that video, I decided to go back and create a small, old school level using the editor Quest and document the process. This ended up taking the better part of a week in my spare time, and I came close to quitting out of sheer frustration multiple times, and I spent a lot of time troubleshooting, but all in all, it was a lot of fun. Quest was originally written by Chris Carollo and Trey Harrison back in 1996, and after they stopped development and released the source code, Alexander Malmberg continued to develop it, adding features and support for other games like Quake 2, Quake 3, Sin, and Hexen 2. Quest was popular back in the early days of Quake mapping as it ran both in DOS and Windows and was even available for Linux. It was very likely one of the first level editors with a GUI. The earliest community mapping programs like MakeBrush were command line utilities that exported text files with brush coordinates that the user would enter in a script or on a command line. The Quest UI was modeled on the original 3D Studio, and it's interesting to note that at that time, there were already utilities that allowed you to export Quake maps from 3D Studio. Part of the challenge of this project was getting Quest to run properly. DOSBox was the easiest option for me, and after grabbing a few missing files, I had it launching and loading maps. Even still, the documentation talked about commands and features that simply did not work. There were graphical issues as well that cropped up often. I had more than one map get corrupted. I did come up with a system to back up my maps at regular intervals, but I still had to be methodical while working. For example, I lost a bunch of trim work that would have made the map a little prettier. At one point late in the project, I opened the map and found that every brush and entity had been duplicated in place four times. I lost about 15 minutes trying to resize brushes that seemed to ignore my every command. Once I was confident I could make this work, I drew out a simple playable map with a beginning, middle, and end and set out to lay down all the floors, which is my usual starting point. It was then that I realized that all of Quest's brush movement is based around vertex manipulation. Simply moving a brush around means you need to click on a focal point, then control A to select all the vertices. I also quickly realized I would need to use keyboard shortcuts instead of the mouse for moving brushes and verts around. Quest wasn't expecting a gaming mouse with a high polling rate, so every little movement was greatly magnified. I minimized this as much as I could in the preferences and in DOSBox, but it was just easier to use the keyboard for most operations. Sometimes the simplest things required a restart of the program. For example, a glitch in the palette would make it impossible to confirm certain values in the UI. Visualization was the biggest challenge in this endeavor. As you probably know from my channel, Trench Broom allows you to create level geometry directly in the 3D viewport. Indeed, this one aspect is the entire reason I'm here on YouTube. I've tried a good majority of map creation tools over the years from Quest to Cool, many versions of Radiant, BSP, Worldcraft, and so on. When I saw a brief video highlighting Trench Broom on Custom Gamer, that is what got me back into mapping for Quake in 2015. The ability to create and do most operations in 3D with complete accuracy was a game changer, let alone making mapping a lot more fun. There's absolutely none of that happening in Quest. The bilinear texture mapping displays alignment accurately, but it's slow and distorted while moving the camera. The flat shaded modes aren't really useful. When you want to preview something after making changes to a brush, you need to rebuild the BSP tree to see it in the 3D viewport, meaning any change you make is not displayed until you hit a keystroke. For the most part, I just compiled and ran the map instead of relying on the preview. The highest resolution I could get working was 1024 by 1024. The program comes with a very basic entity definition file, but most key value pairs need to be entered by hand. But one thing I liked was creating links between targeted entities. Also, texture manipulation was surprisingly powerful. 
Quest is really designed to use wireframe mode for editing. After I got used to this, it was quite fast to navigate around my maps. Depth filtering both in the 2D and 3D modes help reduce visual clutter a little bit, but there's one fatal flaw in navigation. Most movement is axial aligned, meaning you only move the camera in 90 degree increments. You can toggle this off to pan or tilt in 5 degree increments, but it's far from the standard WASD we're used to now. Also, using the keyboard shortcuts to change the angle was unpredictable. So in this case, I had to use the buttons on the UI to turn the camera view on the Z axis. Once I got used to all these quirks, the map started coming together. When I had it playable, I posted for testing on the Quake Mapping Discord, made a few tweaks based on that feedback, and you can download the map linked in the description. All right, so here are some things I learned while doing this. For one, I was surprised at how powerful Quest still is. Yes, Quake is 25 years old, its systems are very basic compared to modern games. Any modern tool can run circles around Quest in terms of user interface and 3D visualization. However, if there was an updated version of Quest available to run natively in modern operating systems, it would be a valuable option for making maps. Quest even has features that Trench Broom does not have. It has an interesting selection of primitive shapes, including a buckyball, which I had to Google, and it also has prefabs, which Trench Broom will never have and really doesn't need. Also, there are other features I didn't even consider using just in the interest of time. So that's the takeaway. Quest is still workable, even with all the jankiness and challenges using this particular version. I was able to make a map like it was 1996. Before I wrap things up, I just want to thank you for watching all the way through the video and indulging me on this weird experiment. I have plans to make at least two more of these videos that cover older mapping tools, and those are very unique, so stay tuned for that. Make sure and let me know about your mapping adventures in the comments below. I know some of you remember these older editors, and I'd love to hear from you and encourage you to share some of your experiences in the comments. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next video.